Hi, everyone. Uh, we've got another session of BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a fellow boater named Benjamin. Benjamin and Benjamin asked our estates first. Uh, Jeff, I've got a battery bank, three flooded lead acid battery banks on my boat, one for the start battery and uh, two for the house battery. Uh, one bank of 300 amp hours and another bank of 400 amp hours. So Benjamin has three battery banks so far. And the question goes as follows. I'm trying to come up with the best charging plan that allows me to later upgrade to lithium as we are preparing to be live aboard cruisers. Hey, congrats, exciting. What is the best way or setup to charge three separate battery banks with one alternator and shore charger for this size battery bank? And then he goes on as saying, I have one 80 horsepower diesel, okay? And he's got a diode isolator on a 60 amp alternator and currently has a 30 amp three bank charger. Okay, lots of information. Let's put things into context. So this owner has three battery banks, um, a little bit unusual, right? Uh, most of us would see two. It's pretty rare to see two house battery banks, but this is what um, Benjamin has. All right, so. The question is, well, how do you recharge three battery banks uh, from a single alternator and also from uh, maybe a three bank battery charger? Well, this is where it gets complicated. You know, the moment you bring in lithium, it's like having some a member of your family that has a serious food allergy. You know, honestly, you can't eat the same food anymore. <laughs> you can, but you can't. You either, it's just different food requirements, right? And it happens. So if you're going to mix and match lithium and lead acid, Whatever worked for lead acid is not gonna work for lithium because lithium changes everything. So it's hard to prepare for this. Now you could, but then you're also gonna forego some benefits because it's simpler when you just have one battery bank or one battery bank chemistry. So let's walk through the scenario. Um, if you were gonna to prepare to go to lithium, then again, assuming that you're gonna probably put in two lithium battery banks, which again is very unusual, but Sure, let's assume that you stick with two lithium battery banks for your house. You're not going to be able to have one battery charger that does two lithium battery banks and a flooded lead acid battery for your starter. You're going to have to pick and choose. So, um, you know, maybe have a charger for your lithiums and a separate charger for your engine battery. You flooded. That's one way. Charger for each. That could be one way. Another alternative is to have a single output charger and have a single output charger go to your engine battery and then have your engine battery recharge your lithium battery banks with what are called DC to DC charging converters, right? So then you would take away your diode isolator. You don't need to have your alternator be shared with multiple devices and you have your alternator directly connect to your engine battery. Your engine battery gets a charge from the charger, single output charger, and then it shares that charge to your two lithium battery banks with what are called DC to DC charging converters. Now, the problem is that those DC to DC charging converters are right now uh, in 2022, pretty much limited to about 30 amps. So, you know, considering you have a 60 amp alternator, um, that 60 amp alternator is gonna be, that's too much power. So you're probably gonna wanna choose maybe a DC to DC charging converter that's maybe 18 amps probably half because you don't want your alternator running too hot, right? Uh, stock alternators are not meant to run at max capacity independently. Like it's too hard for them. They're just simply going to burn out. Uh, they're meant to run for short periods of time um, in maybe bulk, but then eventually the batteries say enough and you go to absorption and you go to float. But with lithium, they're always thirsty. So stock alternators have a hard time. So that might be something you might want to change later on is change your stock alternator. But if you, if you don't, um, you know, maybe do a DC to DC charging converter, maybe 15, 18 amps. So that way your alternator is not overloaded. And like I said, you know, have a single output charger to your engine battery. Now that's one scenario. Another scenario that you consider is maybe have your lithium batteries uh, have a charger connected to it. Um, now the challenge is how you get the engine battery charged. And that's probably where a small little charger for the engine battery would be good. So maybe now you don't have all your eggs in one basket, two chargers, a tiny one for your engine, a reasonable size one for your lithium. And the way that you recharge the lithiums is via DC-DC to converters. So good question, difficult subject matter. 
uh, because there's no easy way to do it uh, when we mix and match battery chemistry. So thanks for asking the question. And to all of you out there that have either attempted or read about this, share. Let us know how you've seen it done, what works, what doesn't work. You know what? We're all here to learn. And I'm the same, exactly the same place as you are. Uh, we're all trying to make our boats better, more reliable and safer. So please share your comments down below and thanks for watching. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.